um, I wasn't sure what to say to him, what's the reason behind it, if you could explain that to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like why, so, Muhammad, um, like, why, why is that the, it's like the first, everyone, every guy, every guy in Islam has a Christian name, why do we have Muhammad? Yeah, so Muhammad, as you know, is the prophet of Islam, yeah, the final prophet, which we believe came to crystallize the message. Yeah, he came, he came to crystallize. Yeah, it says Muhammad Rasulullah in Surah Al Fatih. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he does it. Muhammad Rasulullah, it says it. Chapter 48, yeah. Yeah, chapter 48, the last verse. No, no, it says it, it says it in the Quran. He's, he's unaware. Uh, at any point. So, we believe um, that there were prophets that came, okay? All of them came with the same message which was to believe in a one God and to worship a one God. So we believe in obviously like prophets and messengers like Noah and Moses and Abraham, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people from other faiths would believe in the same thing. So they believe that there were prophets and messengers that came. Now they came to their people and their time. Yeah. So for example, someone like Moses, he came to the children of Israel. Yeah. Some maybe 3000 years ago, whenever it may have been. Yeah. Someone like Abraham came a long time ago, maybe four or 5000 years ago, whenever it may have been to tell his people, his community and his time of the message of truth, which is to believe and worship in only one God, not to associate any partners with that God. Yes. And we also believe in the final prophet, which is the prophet Muhammad. Now, the thing which differentiates prophet Muhammad is that we believe he came for all people and all time. The Quran says, We have not sent you except for all of human beings in chapter 34 of the Quran. Is there any question you had there? Yeah, he was the final. He's the final prophet, right? So he's the, the final one. All the prophets that came before him, they were sent to their communities in their times. He was sent for all communities and all times. He was sent for the black man, the white man. He was sent for the Arab, the non-Arab. You know, he was sent for everybody, right? And that's the reality. So we say that. All prophets came f with two things fundamentally. Yes, they came with the message and they also came with some evidence to prove that they were prophets. So in the case of all of the other prophets, you might have read in the Bible, for example, that, you know, Moses split the sea and all those things. And that, these were visual reinforcements so that those people and communities would be assured that this message is not just uh, a vacuous message. It was, in fact, a reinforced one with evidences. Yes. And Yes, it's, it's evidence. What was the message? So the Moses' message was to believe in God, one God, not two or three, not the Trinity, not you know, or anything like that. Not to believe in uh, multiplicity of gods, only one God, yes? That he's the creator of the universe, the, he's the maintainer, the sustainer, the all-powerful one, the all-seeing, the all-knowing, the all-hearing, yes? He is the... and so on. And so this was the message of Moses, this was the message of Abraham, this was the message of Noah. Not to associate partners, not to worship anyone other than God. Not to worship anyone other than God. In other words, not to take as an ultimate authority anyone other than God. Not to love anyone other than God. Not to be fearful of anything more than God, and so on. Yeah. So that's it. I think you were saying uh, anyone that name they, they can change that name from like they can change the name from Muhammad to something. Yeah, you know, look, Muhammad is not. You don't. Not every Muslim is called Muhammad. Muhammad just means the praised one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It means the praised one. Because people praise him. And you know, this is one of the miracles, you know, of, of the Quran. Because the Quran says, That we have raised your mentioning. Yeah, so Allah said in the Quran, because what the Quran is, is it's a communication between God and the people. Yes. And through the messenger of Muhammad, وسلم, through the messenger. Yeah. And it's the final book. And it has in it all the things we need to know about life. You know, how to eat, how to drink, you know, even uh, how to be with our wife, husband, this and that, whatever, inheritance law, all of the things, everything that you need to, to be guided with, yes, is in the Quran. We believe in this, yeah? So in other words, um, the Quran says also, which is quite interesting, that God has raised your name and mentioning, your status. Whose status? Prophet Muhammad's status. And what's very interesting is that even in a country like this, Muhammad is one of the most popular names in the, in the country, isn't it? Yeah. And that's part of that because actually his mentioning when, when someone calls me and says, Muhammad, come here, you know, it's, it's making an implicit reference to Prophet Muhammad because we're using his name. I was named after the Prophet, you know, and he's mentioned when we pray, for example, when we uh, read the Quran and the verses that, yani, so his status has been mentioned in such a way as that now after 1400 years, yeah, we're still talking about him in a place like this. 
Muhammad again. Could you be like Muhammad? Yeah, you could be called Muhammad. Muhammad, you could be. Called, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So does does this all make sense? That there was all these prophets that came to believe in one God and worship. One, told us to believe in one God and worship one God. Does that make sense? Well, I mean, it makes sense as well. You know, even for Christian people, Christian. Um, yes. You know, not that side ideology. You know, there's one God, there's one God for. Yes. Forgiveness for. Yes. Um, you know, for uh, bad things. Um, so you know, I'm not going to deny that I have to. Yeah, but do you accept that then? I can accept this one, but yeah. Right, so does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, so now the prophet, the final prophet, do you accept also that he, I mean, if you look at some of the things he came with, right? He predicted what's going to happen. The Quran makes predictions of the future. Yep. Yes, so for example, it talks about the fact that at the time there were the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. And the Quran tells us that the Roman Empire will defeat the Persian Empire in three to nine years and that they would defeat them in the lowest part of the nearby land. And that in fact happened. And not only was this a prediction, but the Prophet himself made a series of predictions as to where Islam will spread. He said it will spread to Egypt. He said it will spread to Yemen, to Jordan, to Syria, to Palestine. He said it will spread to the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, which in fact happened. He said that the Persian Roman Empire will end. He, he made a series of predictions, which frankly, to someone who's um, trained in these things will know look, look how what's the probability that all of this can, can come true right so if he was making all these predictions yes the, if he all these predictions yes all of those predictions he said that you know Islam will even go to a Sindh or Hind it will go to Pakistan it will go to pa India it will go to these areas he even made prediction that there will come a time where you'll be riding on Suruj which literally means a thing which you ride and he said you'll be reclining on them there will come a time he said where well, you'll be reclining on these things, these, uh, they're like, Suruj comes from the Arabic word Sarj, which actually means something like a boat. And it referred to the Roman boat, which in fact had wheels on it. Yes, and he said, you'll be riding on these things. In, uh, there'll be a time where you'll be riding on these things and you'll be reclining in them. He said, you'll be reclining. And there'll be these seats, you'll be leather seats. He said leather seats. Yes, Minjil, he said, you'll be, it's Sahih Muslims, Sahih Hadith. You'll be reclining in these things. And he said, you'll be driving around and those women will come out with funny hairstyle and all these things are coming out and ala uh, abuab al-masajid going to the mosques, riding these things. So the, the, the kind of predictions that he put forward 1,400 years ago is something uh, mind boggling. I mean, look, he said that the, the Arabs, the barefooted Arabs, that they will try and compete with one another to, to create the high infrastructures and buildings. Yes. So it's, we're not talking about, you know, uh, some, some, you know, superfluous claims or some weak uh, predictions. We're talking about very specific predictions about what's going to happen and they all materialize. Yeah, obviously that, that's referring to, you could say you're referring to cars. Yeah, no, it's, 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 yeah, you see what I mean? How could he know a thousand four hundred years? Imagine a man in the desert, you know, in a, in a desert telling us all of these things are going to happen. And he has a very small band of followers, 30 people, 40 people, telling us that uh, these people were going to inhabit all of these lands, these big empires and so on. It's something which is it's ridiculous, uh, frankly, if you think about it. It's crazy to a uh, prediction. So it's, it's only prediction can be uh, substantiated if you say that this information came from an all-knowing source, yes, which we say is God. Does that make sense? So, yeah, most of, like, most, most say God, God had this idea as well. Like, yeah, so God told him this. And then he passed on, so he passed to someone. Yes, so because otherwise, how did he know all of that? How could he know what's going to happen in the future? You see what I mean? Does that make sense, yeah? Yeah, so do you accept that that's a good enough evidence? Just that by itself, nothing else now. That's a good enough evidence for someone to say, you know what? This man is a truthful man. He did in fact get... Yeah, yes. Yes, and also the fact that he had the reputation. He had the reputation for being the truthful one. You know, he had the reputation for being the person who, who would never go against the people or his community. They would give him things to store in his house. He was called Asadaq al Amin, the one who is the trustworthy one and the, uh, the, the truthful one. He would, that's why he was referred to as by his community. So, bearing all of that in mind, does that make sense to say that when he came and said that I'm a messenger of God, I'm a prophet of God, that, that was a claim that is, 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 a, is a fair enough claim. It's a truth claim. Yes. Making sense because, like, I guess it's, you're talking about back how many, how many, how long? Like, yes, 1,400 years ago, yeah? So are you willing to accept the fact that there's only one God worthy of worship? And are you willing to also accept the fact that there's only, uh, that the Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger? 
Yes, yes. So what I will do is I will repeat it to you and then it will initiate you into being a Muslim. And so what that would mean is that I'll, I'll give you the good number of this man here and some other brothers who will take good care of you, yes. And then obviously we'll get in contact with each other. If he needs me for anything, I will, I will also uh, be in contact, okay? Is that, is that okay? Yeah, think about it, please. Yes? Huh? You want to think about it? Okay. But well, all it is really is if you believe in those things, if, what it is is that there's a, all you have to say in Arabic is two phrases, yeah? That there's no God worthy of worship except for God. So you're not an atheist, you're not a polytheist, you start believing one God to worship, that's it. And then you say that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. Now, if you say those two things and you accept them and you believe in them, then what happens is we believe your past sins will be removed. Everything that you've done in your life for 21 years, how old are you, 22, 23? Seven. Yes, yes, for, yes. Yes, for, for, as long, for as long as you have been alive, yeah? Yeah, all of those things that you've done, they would go now. You no longer have the sins, you'll be clean, yeah? It's like you're a new person. And then you can start your life as a Muslim. Then you can start, you know, learning how to pray. I'm sure he's going to teach you and whatever. Does that make sense, yeah? I understand. Yes. You have to think about it. No, I'll leave that to you. The brother is here. Yes, very interesting. I'm happy that you're, 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 if you need anything, yes, please communicate. Yeah, you can be called. Yeah, you can have that. You can, people are called these things. I know some Somali brothers. They're called Muhammad, Muhammad. Abdullah, Muhammad. I hear it. I hear it. I've been said before. But yes, hopefully if you understand all of that, yeah, and you agree with it, then the next step, the natural next step is to just embrace it, you know, and then slowly be, uh, the next thing would be to pray. That's the only thing we would expect from you, you know, and Allah would expect from you. Yes? God. Yes? Thank you, man. Anytime, man. Thank you, man. Yes. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Scottish too, but Scottish, uh, I don't have anything Scottish for you, but... No, it's alright, when I come down, we can so have something. You what do you guys eat? Which is different. <laughs> if I do, if I do two, I'll get